Dr. William J. Barber, co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign, begun by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Welcome, and thank you so much for taking uh, time. We know how busy you are. You're organizing an incredibly important march. So could you just tell people what uh, the march that you're organizing is and what the demands are? Yeah, well, first, let me thank you for having me. And let me welcome you, all of your audience, also on behalf of Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris, our co-chair, the 45 coordinating committees of the Poor People's Campaign around the country and thousands of clergy and most of all impacted people, poor and low wealth people that represent the 140 million poor and low wealth people in this country, 43% of the nation. And also, you know, Dr. King did lift this up, but it was also the, the um, welfare rights women who helped push Dr. King. And I think that part of the history should never be left off. Listen, we're, we're, we're in a, a serious time where we're seeing political insurrection. We've seen physical fighting mean insurrection on January 6th, but since then we've seen political insurrection. The, the, uh, literally a, 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 a attempt to wage a political coup through changing voting laws after 56 million people use non-traditional ways to vote. And so Texas uh, is like the canary in the mine. And a uh, number of states have already passed them, but Texas is a place that we need to nationalize. And so I, the Poor People's Campaign in Texas and others said, would, would you come to Texas and join us in a four day march from Georgetown, Texas to Austin? Selma like, like the march in 65, when the people in, in Selma and, and that march said to the federal government, to the Senate, the House and the president, we can't fight this stuff state by state alone. We need federal laws. And so for four days, we'll be marching four to five hours a day, COVID safe with masks and vaccinated those that come. And then in Austin, we'll have a mass rally, COVID safe. Everybody asked to wear masks and distance. But uh, on, on uh, Saturday, July 31st. And here are the five demands. One, end the filibuster. The filibuster is no, nowhere in our constitution. No, nowhere. Shouldn't even be a part of how we deal with politics. So end the filibuster. Number two, pass the true John Lewis bill, which is the For the People's Act, because that's the only way to undo what's being done through these laws. Number two, pass and restore and expand the Voting Rights Act that was gutted eight years ago. Hey, I want your audience to hear, for eight years, we've not acted on this. And then number five, pass $15 minimum wage now, because you gotta connect voting rights to economic rights. The same people that block voting, block healthcare, block living wages, block immigrant rights, block LGBTQ rights, and pass laws to hurt women and block public education funding. And then lastly, pass laws that pro will protect our immigrant brothers and sisters, especially uh, DACA students, and do it by August the 6th, which is the day a Texan pre a president from Texas signed the original Voting Rights Act. We believe it's time to mobilize. We've we launched on J July 12th a national season of mobilization, Moral Mondays in Washington, D.C., Last week, over 100 women were arrested, black and white and brown and Asian from all over the country. We go to, we're going to all of the Senate offices on Monday with delegations to ask them, do they agree with these five things? If they don't, there's going to be direct action. If they do, we'll, we'll uh, celebrate them. And then on Tuesday, we start this march. And then on the following Monday, after the big rally in, in Austin, we're calling for clergy and low wage workers. We're putting the pulpit and the workers together to be in DC to engage in nonviolent moral direct action. Uh, it's on. And there's no way in the world we can be talking about an infrastructure bill while we're letting the infrastructure of the democracy go to hell. I mean, that's, there's no other way to put it. You need both. People say, well, let's do the infrastructure first and then let's fix the infrastructure of democracy. No. You, if, there's no need to build a bridge if then people are going to abridge your right to vote. The right to vote is the bridge to all the other policies. So we need to do both and and not either or. Can you talk about why you're focusing on Texas? Well, first of all, the Texas bill is atrocious. What I mean, it all, Texas was already the worst, had the worst voting laws in the country. And as my grandmother used to say, they want to get worse. Now that's a bad English, but it's good political 
language. Uh, they want to get worse. They were already bad. They've already been sued time and time and time again and lost, particularly when the Voting Rights Act was, was fully um, operative before it was gutted. Now, after the election, following the lies of the Southern strategy and then the lies of, of Trump, you know, the Southern strategy for years had told lies about voting fraud ever since the days of Richard Nixon. So Trump's lie is a lie on top of lies. And Texas also is one of the most diverse states now. And really, it's not a red state. It's a voter suppression, unorganized state. If you get the voter suppression out of the way and organize, Texas is not red because you've got such a diversity there. And in Texas, there are 12, 13 million poor and low wealth people. And in 2016, the president won, the presidential candidate won by 800,000 votes. There were 2.7 million poor and low wealth people who did not vote and many of them, their votes were suppressed. Texas is the place where they would accept your, your they would accept a gun license <laughs> over other forms of, of so-called ID. Uh, Texas is a place where 5 million people make less than a living wage in Texas. So, so Texas needs to be nationalized uh, so that we can, you know, you nationalize a state so that you can point to what's happening in the other states. And you know, I like to say in, in, in during slavery, it took two years for the message to get to Texas. We call that Juneteenth. Well, today people in Texas saying it's not gonna take them two years to speak up. They, we're gonna say from Texas, DC, you need to act. From Texas, we're gonna give strength and call the president and Senator Schumer and those Democrats to move on this issue. If you stop what's happening in Texas and the, you put laws in place to stop that, then you stop it everywhere else. So we're nationalizing Texas, just like Alabama was nationalized in the 1960s. It's time to nationalize Texas today.